Welcome back to another PyTorch Lightning tutorial video. Uh, we'll get into the profiler in this one so that we understand, you know, how we can see where our compute time is being spent. That can be really useful for sort of a sanity check that we are sort of not done any errors during our training. Um, and also if our data loading is slow and so on. So let's copy the previous folder and let's do uh, another one called profiler and we will let's see we'll open up the trainer here you know adding a profiler is actually really simple first of all um, you know there are different levels to it and you can use different profilers but if we just want to have like a simple profiler we can do profiler equals simple and uh, just to not have it take too long let's just do for a single epoch after our training is done here we will get a profiler after the fit and the validate and so on. So this is a little bit difficult to visualize. Maybe there's a better way of doing it uh, because here we can see, so 80% of our time is being spent in the run training epoch where a subset is being run training batch and we have nn.optimizer step. I guess the optimizer step is taking a large time of the training. And then we have dot training step is taking 29. We can see that our data loading here is taking 9% of the time. So maybe we should increase the number of workers a little bit uh, to see if that would help or not. Um, you know, basically you would, you know, if you have that the data loader is taking 40% of the time, right, you'll know that you're bottlenecked by your data loading. And so that's just one thing you can do. You can also do advanced here. You'll get more information. It gets a lot of information though. So you might want to add it to a file or something because uh, it can get uh, too much for sort of the terminal. What I like to do though, uh, and is to use the PyTorch profiler. So we can do from PyTorch Lightning dot profilers, import PyTorch profiler. So there we have it. And then we can initialize it by doing profiler equals PyTorch profiler. And here we can send in some arguments. So first we can set this to our profiler now. And what's cool about the PyTorch profiler is that you get sort of a, uh, it's integrated with TensorBoard. And what's cool about it is that you can do sort of a trace and you can see exactly where your computation is being spent. For that though, we need to install a package first. So just do pip install torch TB profiler. Uh, and then I will have it integrated with uh, TensorBoard. Now to, uh, to make this work, I had to do uh, some arguments on it. So I need to, I had to do on trace ready and I had to set torch.profiler.tensorboard trace handler. And then I specified TB logs and I just set it to my trace. Let's just call it profiler zero. That's to get it working in the tensor board. Otherwise, maybe you'll have it working. I just, I didn't. Um, maybe it's because I'm using SSH or something. I'm not really sure. And then we had to, I had to also do a, I wanted to also trace memory. So you could do trace memory equals true. And then you can set a schedule where we can set a uh, torch profiler dot schedule way. Um, we can do skip first. So it will skip the first ones because it, there might take some time during initialization. We can do wait uh equals one warm up equals one and then we can do maybe 20 active steps yeah like these the skip first is just to have initialize remove and then uh wait is i'm not really sure why we have wait and warm up to be honest i guess we could have set them to zero there are a bunch of more arguments here as well in the pytorch profiler that you can send in you can trace the memory you can trace input shapes it's a, there's a lot you can do here. I'm sort of just giving you a flavor of, of it and how I like to use it. Uh, but so if we set that and we have the profiler here, uh, let's go to the, set it to V1 here and then we can run it. Oh, uh, TensorBoard Trace uh, Handler is what it's called. And then rerun it. All right, so what we have to do now is to run TensorBoard. So we'll do TensorBoard log there, TB logs. And then I'm doing bind all to um, for it to work on SSH. And then if we open up localhost 6006, uh, we can go to PyTorch profiler. And there's a bunch of things you can see here. Um, I'm no expert on PyTorch profile and all you can do here, really. Um, sort of the most general thing is you can see a performance recommendation. In this case, they recommend that we should increase the batch size because of low utilization. 
you know, our model is incredibly small. Um, you can also see an overview of the computation. There are a bunch of things you can see here, sort of exactly what computation are taking up the most amount of time. Um, there are also more arguments that you can send in. So you can see sort of a, a memory uh, consumption graph, sort of where the peaks of the memory consumption is and so on. But what I really wanted to show you is just this trace thing. And I do think it's a little, I, w I don't know, clunky to use. Uh, I'm not really sure why this is the introductory interface of like 380 years or whatever. So you have to kind of zoom in by pressing W and then just <laughs> continue zooming until you get to the profiler steps. But here we can see the, the sort of the 20 active profiler steps that we chose. And uh, it starts at 11 because we had skip 10 and then warm up for one, I guess. But so if we look at a, a single uh, one here, uh, we can see at one training batch that's being run over and over. And in that one, it's being uh, mostly run in the optimizer step. Uh, and the optimizer step seems to be training step, uh, backward, and atom dot step. If we look at sort of what's being run in the training step, we can see it's a linear layer. It's a linear, uh, again, right, our two linear layers, and then across entropy loss. But what takes up most of the time here is actually computing accuracy and F1 score. Um, so, you know, this leads us to find the bottlenecks. We can also look where exactly the data loading is. In this case, this part is a data loading, and then this is the comp computation step. So we can see that it's a relatively uh, short amount of time for data loading. It's definitely not taking up a huge amount of the computation. Uh, maybe we can improve it, but it's pretty good. So I just want to show you for this example, right, what we can uh, use this for is, uh, in this case, we could go to our model. We could say that, all right, we know now that the computing accuracy in F1 score like this is not the best idea. Uh, so we can remove those, and instead, we can uh, return here the scores and the labels, uh, which we are doing. And we can uh, do a uh, another function, define train epoch end, where we get all the outputs. And here, when we get all the outputs like this, we can uh, get all the scores and the labels directly, and we can compute it. So uh, let's see what uh, it's doing here. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so it did it for us directly. So here it's taking the average loss of all during the epoch. Uh, we can remove that. I don't know if we need that. And so what, what's happening here is we're concatenating all of the scores that was computed for all batches during the tr each training step. And we're getting all the labels. And then we're computing the accuracy uh, sort of in a vectorized way for all examples at once instead of doing it chunk by chunk in a loop. Uh, that makes it a lot more efficient. And so if we now, um, first of all, I think we need to stop TensorBoard here. For some reason, it causes errors sometimes. And then uh, remove the logs. If we retrain it, and hopefully that works. All right, good. And then we reopen TensorBoard here. And we rerun this. And we go back to our PyTorch profiler now. We look at the trace and we zoom in. Um, obviously, you know, that we can't see that time now. Um, so uh, it's it's been removed from it. And the only thing that's being run in the training batch is training step, backward, and atom.step. And so uh, we're computing the accuracy and the F1 score at the end, which is sort of a um, efficient, more efficient way of doing it. Uh, there's loads of things you can do here, and I could probably make one hour video, uh, you know, of how to use this thing. Uh, as I said, I'm no expert on PyTorch Profiler or things like that. I usually just use it as a sanity check um, to just see that it, it, there's nothing majorly wrong. Uh, but yeah, that's it uh, for profiling in Lightning. Hopefully you found it useful and insightful of how you can use that in your project. Uh, in the next video, which will be the final sort of what I've planned for this series, I might make more in the future when I learn more advanced stuff of Lightning. But for the basics, at least, uh, the next one is going to be how to do multi-GPU training 
and that will be a con uh, sort of a conclusion to this series. All right, I uh, like the video if you thought it was useful, and I hope to see you in the next video.